Welcome to the R video tutorial on long data frames to wide data frames. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University, but anybody can use it. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read in our data. This data can be found at the repository linked in the description below, and we're going to use the fa1.txt data set. And I've got it partially set up here to let you know that, hey, we can, we can read this in. The issue is, is I wanted to get you to remember that since this is a TXT file, we can, or we need to put in the delimiter. So let's see, we have the separator here. In our case, since it's tab delimited, should be backslash T. And for mine, it's on the desktop, and I'm using the path approach, which is go to the, my home directory, desktop FA1, and read it in from here. So let's give this a go. So it read in my data. There's FA1, we have a subject, and then we have sample, and then we have the FA value. And FA value is a value uh, from a brain scan on a voxel in your brain. But don't worry about that. So I have a subject, and notice I have the same subject has three measurements. So this is an example of a long file in the sense that each measurement defines a row versus each subject defining a row. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to have one row for each subject and have the measurements go across it. Now, being able to convert back to a wide file is important because SPSS really likes wide files, whereas most statistical packages like long files. So if you're planning on exp uh, exporting things to SPSS, probably should make it a wide file if it's not already one. All right, so let's keep continuing. So the first thing I need to do is subset the data by each time. So subset the data by each time. And here I'm going to have to be careful, so I'm just going to name this T1 for time 1 at the moment. And I'm going to take FA1, and I'm going to use the bracket notation. I want all of the rows for time one and my variable here is sample so fa1 dollar sign sample and again it's double equals one and i don't want all of the columns i only want columns one and three so this will give me columns one and three here so uh, when i run this you'll see what shows up so if i run t1 we look at T1, you can see it only has the subject column and the FA column, and it has uh, no reference to any time. However, the observation number going down the side, you can see, jumps by threes. Okay, so I want to do this again for times two and times three. So I'm going to copy and paste, because copy and paste is your friend here. Let's change what we have. So this would be time two, time three, change the two, and the three here. Now, the columns are the same over here, so I'm not really worried about that. So what I'm gonna do now is I want to change the column numbers or the column names first, because remember, they all say FA, and I need to preserve what time we were actually looking at in each one. So I'm gonna use the names statement again. So I'm gonna say names for T1, and I want the second place right, because it's the column for FA. If you remember, T1 has two columns. I'm going to make this one FA1. And I'm going to do this again for all three of these. So this will change the names for the column headings. So use copy and paste because we love copy and paste. And I'm going to change this will FA2, and this will be FA3, but this will be for time 2, and this will be for time 3. So if I do this, when I run this, I should have now three data sets, which each have a different header for the FA value. So I can run this. If I look at it, now it has FA1. If I look at T2, it has FA2. T3 has FA3, and they all have the same subject. So if I look across here, the subjects are fine. So the next thing I want to do is merge these together. And the reason I say merge is because we're going to use the merge function. And you should go back and look at the tutorial that I've got on a card above if you do not know how to merge files together. So 
Uh, let's put in here what we did. We changed the name of the column to reflect the sample. And I'll put your sample time, whether it was the first, second, or third. All right, so now we're going to merge these together. And I'm going to have to do this in a couple steps. So, so let's give this a go here. So I'm going to do the first one. So I'm going to call this FA2 because the other one was FA1. So I have FA2 here. And then I'm just going to merge here T1 and T2. And I'm going to merge on the specific column that I want. Now I have to go, okay, so I'm going to have to merge on a specific column. Okay, so remember how to merge. If you don't remember how to merge, just type in question mark merge down here and it will come up in the help over here. And it's pretty easy to do. Uh, all you have to do is put in here what you want things to work on. And so in our case, we want it to merge on which by equals here subject and this should merge them together so if I look at FA2 you can see I have subject FA1 and FA2 and then I can do this again for FA3 so I'm going to take FA2 and T3 and I'm going to merge by subject Okay, so if I run this, we should get the data set that we were looking for. So I have a subject, I have FA1, FA2, and FA3 all listed on here, and I have all 11 subjects. Okay, so the next question would be, can I do this all in one statement? So the easiest way to know how to, if you can do this, is just to give it a try. So, so first, let's put here, merge the data set, data frames together. So let's try, uh, I'm going to make it FA4, and we'll just see if we can merge all of them together. So merge T1, T2, and T3 by subject. And we'll see if this actually works. Don't forget the assignment operator. And notice it doesn't work. So you can only do one at a time. So keep this in mind. So put here, this doesn't work. So you must do this in pairs. Okay. Now, uh, this does work in this case. There's another way that you can do it with CBind, which is a little more dangerous, which we're going to skip here at the moment. But this gives you a way to take and turn a long file into a wide file, because if you look at FA3, it is a, exactly a wide file. Each subject defines the row, and each column defines the measurement, and the title tells us which measurement time it was. Okay, so this has been the video tutorial on turning a long file into a wide file. You can move on to the next video.